Why is it the things that can accomplish the most good in our lives seem to be the things that we struggle to be faithful in? I, I, I don't mean just us, but it just seems like even if we was thinking about the things in life, you know, that, that we deal with, finances and, uh, you know, taking care of just regular business, the things that we could do that would most benefit us oftentimes, we seem to struggle with those things and we become strong in the things that might make us weak. But as we look to the scriptures, we clearly can see our great benefit in having a good prayer life. I think we all know First or Second Chronicles 7 and 14 very well, probably all of us have it memorized. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. What do, we, what do we get from this passage of scripture other than we've memorized it, we've heard it preached over and over. Those of us that are preachers, we have, I can't count the times. There's no telling how many times I've used this passage of scripture in a message, in a devotion, or read it for myself to try to encourage myself. But what really do we get out of this passage of scripture one of the things that we're called to is not just to pray. Um, I know people that, that I have great confidence in that pray, I know they pray a lot. And I also know people that I have zero confidence in and I know they pray a lot. That sounds bad, doesn't it? But it's the truth. I, I know they have a report that they pray long and regularly. So is it just enough to pray? No. Well, we know if that be the case, how about all of the other religions that are very strict in their times of prayer? So just praying isn't enough. Just getting down on our knees or laying prostrate, none of those is enough, but how we pray. Notice he says humble themselves. That just doesn't mean simply to get down on your knees or even to, you know, get your... Now, there's been times you probably have and I have been in such a spirit of prayer and in the presence of God, we couldn't bury ourselves enough in his presence. But is that all that it's calling us to when it says humble yourselves in prayer? No, it's deeper than that. The Greek here refers to being subdued, to be under, brought, into subjection. Think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it be possible that this cut pass from me. Then we see this humility in prayer. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. If we're going to humbly pray before the Lord, it will be a prayer of complete submission and surrender. God, not just you know, Lord, this is, this is the situation and I need your help. And, but God, if this is what I need to walk through, if this, David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, there's gonna be some, the valley of the shadow of death, there's gonna be some valleys that you and I are going to have to walk through. We're not gonna get around them. We're not going to somehow be, uh, as, as we see in the scripture, translated from one place to another. We're gonna to have to walk through that valley. And the only thing, and listen, sometimes you've been through things and I've been through th things that death didn't look so bad. The situation seemed even worse than death. David said, this, this is just shadow. This is just the valley of the shadow of death. Sometimes that can, look, we, we die, what, what's gonna happen? We rejoice, we're going to glory, we're gonna see the Lord, we're gonna be in his presence. But that shadow of death is a horrible place. But thou art with me. And so we're going to have to humble ourselves to the will of God, whatever it is. And then he says, and seek my face. You, we've probably all heard this or shared this. You know, we're encouraged in scripture to ask the Lord for our needs and to bring our petitions before the Lord. But if our entire time of prayer is seeking what he can do for us, and not times of 
looking into the beautiful face of the Lord and communicating with him in just a loving time of, of devotion. And, and I've even tried to get quiet at times in my prayer. I find myself, I find myself at times making myself, okay, enough said, now just listen, try to, and I don't know if, you know, I've loved to hear God just speak audibly to me or even loudly at times in my spirit. And sometimes it's just that still, it's not even a voice, that still strong feeling, this is what I need to do and this is what, but, but we've got to be still. We're going to have to look into his face. And, and I know Bethany, when she was little and she was trying to talk to us and and, you know, we were, pre, you know, uh-huh, uh-huh. She'd get us by the chin and pull her. <laughs> Listen with your face. Listen to me. God wants to really have that time of relationship with us and turn from their wicked ways. I think sometimes we put too much um, emphasis on great, horrible, wicked things, stealing and killing and adultery. And those, are, those are wicked ways, but so is envy, strife, gossip. All that's unrighteous, everything that the scripture has asked us not to, those are wicked ways. Everything, you know, listen, wicked ways will lead you to sinful ways. And so he says, turn from that. What's, what's the, the answer then? What's gonna happen? He's gonna hear from heaven. We want God to hear us, don't we? Lord, let us, let us pray prayers that, that gets your attention, that turns your heart and your eyes to us. When I pray for my children to be saved, I want God's attention and, and I want him to be looking right down at me with his ears wide open because I put myself in that place of prayer. William Barclay gives us this advice about how we should pray when we pray, remember, the love of God wants the best for us. When we pray, remember, the wisdom of God knows what is best for us. When we pray, remember the power of God that can accomplish it. Martin Luther said this and gives this advice about our dependency in prayer. Pray as if everything depends on God and work as if everything depends on you. What the old timers used to say, Put legs on your prayers. Don't just pray, do something. E.M. Bounds said this about the need of prayer. What the church needs today is not more machinery or better, not new organizations or more novel methods, but men whom the Holy Ghost can use. Men of prayer, mighty, men mighty in prayer. A.C. Dixon says this about prayer about relying on prayer. When we rely on organization, we get what organization can do. When we rely on education, we get what education can do. When we rely on eloquence, we get what eloquence can do. But when we rely upon prayer, we get what God can do. And one of my favorites, one of my favorites that uh, means so much to me Sidlow Baxter said this, men may spurn our appeals, reject our message, oppose our arguments, despise our persons, but they are helpless against our prayers. Run if you want to, children. Run if you need to, member. But if my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their lands. Let's ask ourselves this question today. With all we know about the benefits of prayer, why would there be grass growing in our paths? Help me, Lord. Help me. Any prayer requests this morning? Let's remember the McGriff family.